Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 234. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else the gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for broadcasts for shooters, hunters, and all things firearms related. In this show, we'll be discussing a blacklist barrel review, a Mossberg's new Ruger Precision Killer, and a red dot from Nikon. And tonight on the podcast, we have the usual Rob, Tony, Zane, because our our buddy Sean seems to like other stuff better than us. So I guess we'll him. move. No, <laughs> we'll right. move into what you guys did in firearms since you guys are probably nothing but who's first well, no i actually went out and i got a couple magazines for my ruger lc9 and then i had a uh, one of those holsters made for it which zane is probably going to hate because i think it's what they call the um hybrid holster where it's uh or the the the, the what you call yeah. not, not the plastic the plastic soft, armor with soft, the, soft, what soft backing with a kydex shell yeah basically yeah i hate them <laughs> okay well zane hates it i don't care Zane doesn't get to wear it. I get to wear it. So Zane, hey, you're the one that's got to wear it. Darn right. As long as you replace them when they start wearing out, you really shouldn't have any problems with them. Exactly. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on them. I just don't find them comfortable. That's the main reason I don't like them. Well, that's why I bought them. I'm trying out my Ruger LC9 because I'm using that as my uh, carry weapon, carry gun when I uh, ride my motorcycles. Yep. So. Yeah, I then, I personally like those kind of i find those kind of holsters are comfortable you yeah. know and it's each their own but you know i also understand the shortcomings of them you got to watch them so yeah, when I mean, they start really getting gonna keep a holster for 20 30 years i mean holsters uh, well, it doesn't it doesn't take that the problem is when you're you sweat and stuff especially if it's not a high i don't know who's you got or whatever but especially with like cheaper leathers you're sweating everything it, it gets real malleable and they can end up folding over just a little bit and getting in your trigger guard when you go to reholster. And they can't – just with any other holster you should pay attention to. It's not just – but it's it's a re reoccurring theme that we've started to notice. Yeah. Pay, pay attention to your the gear. Thing. PMCS pay your stuff. Pay attention to your gear. Yep. Pay attention to your gear, all your gear, especially if you carry it every day, and especially if you have a chance of putting a bullet through some of your meaty parts – if your gear fails. Yeah, I don't want a That's hole all. in me, so. <laughs> Tony, since you're blabbing, what did you want to do in firearms? What did you have fun with? What, what, 12, what, 10 you gauge just, shotguns? Did you just have a stroke? What is happening to you? I always <laughs> have a stroke. <laughs> Jeremy. Can I call 911 and say, please go to Chad's house? Where the hell's my sign? <laughs> oh my God. I'm okay. I'm okay. Went, I'm, 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 exactly. Okay, first of all. You realize everybody listening to this podcast has got no clue what we're talking about, right? Hey, there's one oh, viewer heard, right now, okay? They heard him stumble and stutter. <laughs> and the one viewer is Zayd. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't even gotten on yet. Um, what I did and what we did was decided to have a free state day. And we're all going to Pennsylvania and shooting some guns that weren't legal in Jersey. And then we proceeded to go to Pennsylvania and break out a break barrel 10 gauge. <laughs> and, and and proceed to see whose shoulder could be bruised the most which is totally this, legal in jersey yeah right. which is 100 percent legal in jersey but we just took a single shot break barrel we took other guns too but it was just sean was going to break it out because we were talking about it on uh, the 2a4e podcast and wow that 10 gauge is no joke we shot some cool guns um, ran into a guy named Joey who actually was from PA, was from Jersey, moved to PA, and had a VZ58, which, if you guys know, is a Czech version of a better made version of the AK 47 from Czechoslovakia. And I always wanted one of those. And when they were for sale for like $500, I didn't get one because you'd have to find someone to make it Jersey legal. And it was like, I didn't know people then. And I don't even know if I had my firearms ID card at the time. Well, he let us shoot it. Dude, it is such a step above an AK in operation and smoothness. Uh, the only down part is you have to get check specific parts for it. Um, 
and then that would suck. But anyway, the gun shot really well. Sean shot it. I shot it. And then we proceeded to just shoot the RPK Sean had, which I posted a video up on my social media with and um, had some fun. And then right at the end, one, Jay walked up to me and was like, hey, you're Tony Simon, right? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I saw you. I met you at the, uh, excuse me, his name is Joey Riva, R-I-V-A. He met me at uh, Trenton at one of the speeches. And uh, just a real cool dude. And then a guy named Tim walked up to me. And Tim was like, hey, Tony, um, here's some money. I always wanted to get it to you for the diversity shoot, and I never did. So here. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess it pays to have a big shirt all the time that says T 2A40. <laughs> never leave home without it. But it was really cool because they're both fans of this show and that's where they heard of us. And I, I it's real humbling. It was really cool to meet these guys in Free America shooting some cool guns. And I just wish Jersey gun owners would wake the hell up so we could take Jersey back and I wouldn't have to leave the state to actually have fun with guns. Oh, and, you know, driving both ways across the border, like the capacity of the guns didn't go down. I could have thrown the RPK in my truck, my trunk, and just drove into this state with it. Like there was nothing there to make the guns disappear when I drove over a bridge. Just letting politicians know that. Just say it. There's no magic at the borders. It's not Narnia. Well, they might want to try to put a wall up around Jersey now. Now they can't put a wall up. They can't pull a wall up because they sound like (laughs) hypocrites. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Zane, what'd you do? Uh, I did wedding shenanigans. Um, Buddy of mine from the Marines got married. So, and every one of the uh, groomsmen were either like cops or former mill dudes. So, we went out to the gun range and held some friendly competitions. They were Did friendly because had had we kept score, it would have been embarrassing for all of us. Uh, do, I don't know, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm sure no. If we would have kept score, I wouldn't have, because <laughs> it was kind of sad. Um, so that was fun. We did that. Then we met some really cool dudes afterwards. Like really cool guys, industry guys were hanging out down there. Um, all kinds. Of, I can't even remember the company because there was a little bit of adult beverage involved, but there were. Lots of companies, lots of trainers from around the country had met up to do some kind of weird reunion they do once a year. So those guys were cool. Um, that's pretty much everything firearm related. Yeah, my my firearms related stuff consisted of writing a review. So <laughs> oh, I went you to know? work on my review, but the rain was coming quick, so I just grabbed a dot torture target, three mags, and uh. That's all I got done before the rain started. It's, it's it's the nice season here, so I don't know what this rain stuff you're talking about is. Yeah, anyway. so it, <laughs> it, in in Florida we go from we go to for like eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, it goes to about a hundred degrees. Then by noon it's about a hundred and ninety degrees, and then <laughs> we have a hurricane around two, and then the mosquitoes come out and try to carry us away once it gets dark. Okay, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, no, you do I'm know it. Do like your dragonflies, Chad. Yeah. Well, you do know it's scheduled to rain here by Chad's definition tomorrow because I live in in Oregon. Here, I say it only rains twice a year, and that's like August through June, and then on the Fourth of July. So nice. <laughs> you know, but that's not true. But that's about what it sounds like. So we're on to our announcements. Our bandwidth sponsor is our buddies at Patriot Patch Co. Uh, there are new patches for pre-order, and those patches are the Circle of Life and the Space Force. And join the patch of the month, and you can get cool stuff like like the Colonial Pocket Dump and this cool little drawing that Ryan does and signs and they print up. So hey, do that. That biker's item someday. Well, I don't. You know, Ryan's a friend of mine, but I, I don't know if he's ever going to make it big enough that this is going to be worth much. Well, <laughs> sorry, he, Ryan. <laughs> well, unlike Ryan too, Ryan's a friend of mine, and for my stuff to be worth something, he has to be assassinated. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's this is probably all true right. because We're have a plot we, this evening. <laughs> we all know that artists 
don't get famous until they're dead. So yeah. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. Nah, I like them <laughs> enough not to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, if you're shopping at Amazon, use our affiliate link at firearmsradio.tv/amazon. And if you want to donate to Tony and his diversity shoot and you want to shop Black Bag Resources for the donations, use the code 2A4E and that will be donated to Tony. I'm waiting. Do you know you the want to? The cool. opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the <laughs> Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. Did you mute me again? No. No, no you no. have one job. <laughs> well, I was waiting for him to say, Rob. Well, I figured you'd just hey, start in. Chad, Chad, just shut up and talk about the daggum blacklist G19 barrel, okay? Oh, oh no. nice. Well. That was a good segue, though, for him Him slacking earlier. I guess we'll we'll get into that review then. Well, Okay, Blacklist sent me this pretty, pretty barrel. Uh, as you can, pretty? if you go, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty colors. So, if you go over to the Farms Insider, you can look at the review there. Is that, There's, is that that's the rainbow one, right? That is the rain. It's Chameleon from them. Ah, Chameleon. Uh, it it is quite pretty. I I, you know, have to say that. Uh, but if you go I over to the Farms. Well, look, go over to the Firearms Insider and you can look at all the pretty pictures because unlike Zane, I've figured out how to take pictures in my in my few short years. Uh, <laughs> it always, uh, always comes back to me. It does. And I don't know. It, I don't think it's because you're young. I think it's just because... You're an epic you're bucket of fail. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, I'm glad you put it so elegantly. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Uh, if you guys haven't heard of Blacklist Industries, they've been around a while. They make barrels for blocks and M&Ps, and they make some other parts. Like I think they make bolt carrier groups for ARs and some other stuff. Well, okay. This thing's great looking, as you probably already heard me say. Uh, they do. Seems like Blacklist pays pretty good attention to detail on their barrels. Uh, also, it comes in this nice little hard case with a barrel, and here's a patch and some stickers. You know, sweet little hard case that you could fit a small gun in if you wanted. It is does have a gasket, so it's pretty much watertight. Uh, I guess that's kind of a little plus. You know, the caliber is marked on the top of the hood, uh, along with what it's for. Well, this one's a G19, so it says that. Uh, the barrel does have column fluting down it, so it's just straight down the sides. Gives it some different colors, the way they do the coating on it. Uh, I put it in the Grey Ghost slide that I have that Grey Ghost sent me for review earlier, so if you want to go check that out. Uh it fits it, in this particular slide. It fit a little tight, uh, which is good because it wasn't enough to make it not function with ammo and not load rounds and stuff like that. Uh, it does cause a little bit of finish wear, which you probably aren't going to be able to see. But like right up here, there's some finish wear. And then on the top where it locks up here, there's some finish wear where the pretty chameleon finish wore off. Uh, the barrel is made from 416R stainless, which is pretty much what a lot of pistol barrels are made out of. So when it, the stuff wears off of it, you don't really have to worry about it rusting or doing anything like that. Uh, it is considered a drop-in barrel. It does have a full supported chamber, uh, Sammy spec chamber, if that matters. Uh, it is the rifling in it. It says you can run any load, including plus P. They use a broach cut rifling, uh, which is a pretty accurate way to rifle barrels. I actually like broach cut rifled barrels as opposed to like hammer forged or button rifled, but that's kind of preference. Uh, they cut it. And it's kind of just one of those things. 
Uh, it has a recessed crown, not that you can really see it, as most do, to help produce, help eliminate dings and stuff to cause accuracy. Uh, the 9 millimeter version has a 1 in 10 twist rate, which better stabilizes the heavier bullets like 147s, even like 165s. So now we'll get into how it shot for me, which is more, I don't have a ransom rest or anything, so this is more real-world accuracy. Uh, I did shoot, all the sh targets I shot were at 15 yards, and I just rested the pistol on a bag off of a hard surface, so just literally, like, if this is a bag, just resting on it. Uh, I shot five-round groups. Uh, not the best test, but for real world accuracy it's probably better than you know a three round group plus i didn't like lock it down tight uh, my best group actually that i shot with it with regular range ammo was with the aguila 115 grain which kind of surprised me and it shot a one and three quarter inch group uh the worst group i shot was only around two and three quarters inches uh I so I was really impressed with how the barrel shot and how most of the groups averaged right around two inches, a little more. Kind of depended on the ammo, but it wasn't big fluctuations in the ammo type like some other barrels like certain ammo over others. This one seemed to be pretty consistent. Uh, if you go over to the review, there's a bunch of pictures with a tape measure because I didn't take the calipers out. And it's kind of just a rough idea anyway. And it says with what ammo, what the groups were, or you can see what they were. Uh, like there was Buffalo ammo also produced like a two inch group. Uh, you know, the SIG ammo was just a little over two inches. Some Spear Lawman was not great at almost three inches. Did you shoot so, a control group out of your stock barrel? Well, I don't have a stock barrel, so... Oh, that's my, right. That's a whole, that whole thing's a custom build. My control group was out of a Faxon barrel, mm. and it produced this... It, it, it's kind of weird. The Faxon barrel, with the right type of ammo, is more accurate, but the spread for different ammo types is more on this particular one. So I actually like this barrel better because... You can shoot whatever out of it. Right, it it shoots more. It, it it's not as fussy as what I shoot as far as accuracy is. And yeah. <clears throat> that's go ahead, Tony. Well, I mean, I, I was just saying, if you're one of those people that are shooting for accuracy or some kind of competition, you'd have your favorite ammo anyway, and that would be the only thing you shot out of it. But if you shoot shoot a variety of ammo, yeah, you'd like a barrel that shot that shoots a variety of ammo well so yeah if you're like me and you go to ammo yes. seek and you put in what you want you buy what's cheap, yeah. the cheapest, you just, yeah. exactly as long as, as long as it's brass cased and not remanned uh i don't care what it is <laughs> just send and, it to me and and that's that's how i am and i'll even reload ammo and I don't you mind know, factory reman stuff, but like some of the stuff you use, like some guy yeah, made a bunch of stuff, uh, put in a Ziploc uh, bag. I'm going to nope. totally pass on that. <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah, I'll go. Are you a Florida man reman? <laughs> no. No, no. So, uh, yeah, so I, I prefer this. They all shot about the same point of aim, point of impact. Uh, even, even some of the heavier ones didn't seem to... I mean, they will go up or down slightly, but it wasn't it wasn't really noticeable uh i did i did shoot that's not in this but i did sh actually shoot some of my 147 grain reloads out of it and they shot pretty much the same uh <clears throat> i wasn't shooting them off a rest but point of impact was about the same so i i, I like that also uh i'm i'm like these guys you buy the cheapest ammo you can find that's brass case new and that's what I shoot so <clears throat> so firearms insider eight key points claim to fame you know it's a match grade Glock barrel target market 
shooters wanting better accuracy or builders of Glock style pistols, you know, kind of like Polymer 80 style or any of the other ones that you can piece together. Features and benefits. We went over some of them, but I'll go over them again. 416 stainless barrel, 1 in 10 twist. This is a 9mm version. It is drop in. They do run pulled broach rifling. It has a full supported Sammy chamber. It does have the column flutes, and it is compatible with Gen 1 through 4 Glocks. Uh, other aesthetic options or finishes, you can get it in bright stainless, titanium nitride, which is gold, or the, what they call armor, which is a black nitride. You can also get it in, a th in threaded versions if you want a threaded barrel. Uh, so there is it's what others are saying. I just pulled one off their website, uh, but I couldn't really find much else. There is a forum review from the Brian Enos forum with somebody who did a review on it, so there's a link to that. The price point, MSRP is $219.99. Uh, the retail, I found found them in stock at AIM Surplus for $209.99. Uh, I don't know why Brownells doesn't sell them, but hey, that's just me. So if you need it now, I'd go to AIM Surplus, or you can try Blacklist Industries. And here's the caveat is Blacklist Industries lead time is six to nine weeks. AIM so Surplus. <laughs> AIM Surplus. So, uh, yeah. And plus I buy through them a lot. Yeah, I've bought stuff from them too, so. And that's one of the reasons I put them in here. It's not, it's not one of the questionable places to buy stuff. I mean, lots of people buy from me at Surplus, and I've never really heard bad stuff about them. So I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. They got them in stock at least when I checked, and they're cheaper. So hey, uh, our rating, the pros, it is drop in. I do like the one in ten twist rate. Uh, I like the broach rifling. I did like the consistent accuracy. The cons, delivery time. And I wasn't keen on the finish wear, but that's about it. So I gave it a score of eight and a half, which is great. You guys got any questions? Comments? Does it take Glock mags? <laughs> it does take Glock mags. No, no, because it's just a barrel. It does not oh. take Glock mags. All right, all right. All oh, right. dude, I, I, it, it's funny because that became a thing, and now it's just hilarious. <clears throat> the Glock mag thing. Um, yeah. I like the fact that, that it's a drop in barrel that improves stuff over the facts and barrel that you use as a control. Well, or or even that, over the factory barrel. There's a lot of aftermarket match grade barrels out there. Yeah, that aren't. That don't that don't group any better in your stock Glock barrel. Right. So you drop two hundred bucks for, you know, a barrel. Now what nothing. I have to say what I have to say about that is it's great that if you have a drop in, you know what I mean, drop in barrel that yeah. actually improves accuracy, but you actually have to be able to shoot well enough to see that improvement in accuracy. Yep. A lot yep. of people, okay, and this is one of the JC Whitney catalog used to come and people would want to get bolt on horsepower for their car. <laughs> now they're trying to buy bolt on skill set for their guns. Right. And the skill set doesn't come from a barrel. Yeah, the skill set doesn't come from a barrel. You can use the best barrels out there. And if you suck, you suck. Yeah. Sh shooting a pistol is not easy. <laughs> shooting a pistol, excuse me, shooting a pistol accurately is not very easy. And it's a perishable skill set. And so, you have to work at it. Yeah. So a buddy of mine posted in one of these groups that we're talking about modded up Glocks of the day. Uh, I thought it was perfect for this conversation. He said if he had to choose between a surgeon with a pocket knife and a Neanderthal with a scalpel, he'll take the surgeon every time, but he'd prefer the surgeon have the proper tool for the job. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you right. know, I, obviously software is more important than hardware, but if you can, if you have the skills and you can outshoot your stock gun, and it, yeah, I mean, go for yeah, it. But now, tell you now I cannot shoot my stock Glock. I can. You can. Yep. Good for you. Well, I'm not and that good yet. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say something about certain barrel manufacturers, not, not Blacklist. They've, 
they seem like they're doing pretty good. I have because you know I like 1911s and I, n- I noticed that Zane perked up. Uh, Come I have to the a bar- street. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Barstow barrel in one of my 1911s, and that thing. The difference that particular barrel made over a stock 1911 barrel was just phenomenal. I mean, was it custom fitted though? It was one of their semi fit, so basically, very little fitting at all. I mean, just like a touch. And oh, yeah, a barrel can absolutely make a difference. I mean, right? I mean, so if but if you can't shoot a four or five inch group at 15 yards yeah. with your stock gun, a barrel's not going to do you any good. Exactly. But, oh, my goodness. You know. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know. here's... I don't... Okay, I like watching YouTube videos. I like checking stuff out. I don't really compare myself to anyone else. Um, I put up what I put up, and you can believe what I... You can believe the groups I post, or you could not believe the groups I post. So I'm doing a review right now, a written review on SR-22 from Ruger. I wanted to make sure I didn't screw up. When I put a post on, I put distance that I'm from the target. Now, for this review that we have coming up, I shot a quarter size group of 15 yards with a Ruger SR-22. 10-round group. And um, people were like, oh, no, it's a couple-inch gun at 25. I'm like, no. No, it's not. It's like four inches. You can't keep it on paper. I'm like, who the heck is doing these reviews? <laughs> you can't keep it on paper. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm doing two inch groups of 25 yards with a 20 SR22. Uh, and, and it's not me going, oh, I'm better than you. But I'm like, a lot of people, even reviewers, or especially reviewers, don't shoot that well. Yeah, but no, they always true. want to get trigger jobs done and replace the entire inside of everything and send the gun out to be customized. And I'm like, yo, how about just maybe doing some dry fire or taking a class and learn how to actually sh- grip a pistol and, my group, and pull the trigger? My group shrank just from replacing the sights because I have such a thinner front sight blade now. Just easier right. to see. I mean, and that's... Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, okay, it is hardware, but you got to a point where that's front sight. It made a difference. Right. Now yeah. five, six years ago, probably wouldn't have made a difference. Right. And that's the thing, is it's really your skill set, you know, and with me, like on these reviews, you know, it's actual that's kind of why like, yeah, I put the tape measure here, you know, I marked them. But you know, your rev- results may vary because it depends on how well you shoot. I'm sure I could get way better groups out of it if I locked it in a ransom rest. But and I tell you, the other side of the the other side of the conversation is even if you can't shoot that well, but you just want your gun to look cool. It's America, right? man. It's free country. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? <laughs> Do you whatever? Think? I'm not. Even, <laughs> I'm not even telling you if you suck, don't get it. I'm just saying. You might want to get up to a certain level before you put that kind of money into well, something. You, you yeah. might, or you might be disappointed. Takes, yeah. Right. It might yeah. be better to put the money in training and ammunition as opposed to pretty doodads to put on your gun. Hey, but like I mean, like Zane said, we all like pretty doodads. Come on. Yeah, so and, again, it, 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 it's America. If you just want to go to the range with pretty doodads and, and do mag dumps all day, rock on. Uh, it's yeah. just Knock not my out, thing. Guys. Yep. Yeah. It's your money. It's not my money. I, I, here's the thing: if you shoot more accurately, you'll have more fun. That's yep. what I found. Yeah, that's this is true. I mean, golf balls are a lot of fun to shoot. So, yeah. hey, dude, I did, when I did the hostage shot at 100 yards with the four inch 357 Magnum. Oh, dude, <laughs> I was a giddy big dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, what I started yeah. using for targets push pins. Like the little like thumbtacks for like a cork board, yeah. That's what I've been using. I, for, like I like at like three and four yards, not you know anything. Oh. But yeah. What do you mean? But you yeah, put well, them at like twenty five and shoot them with your twenty two. Oh yeah. And the, if you, if, the, if you the, just start them, if you get true metal tacks, you mm-hmm. just start them, and then if you hit them dead center, they'll push in. It's it's fun <laughs> to shoot at really tiny tiny little targets, though, because it forces you to apply the fundamentals. Yes. Aim small, miss small. 
Um, yeah. That's what I like doing. I really need to get my glasses because that's what's holding me back right now. I have the trigger control, breathing control, but if you can't really see the target, it helps like, me really see the target. Um, so I see a blur and I try to get the same picture on the blur, but sometimes it fades out. Like I really need to get my glasses, but still, you know, if you got a scope, this, Tony, maybe you can adjust it enough. That was with the 22 on a windy day at 15. So well, you're blind, yeah. so that's pretty. I good. usually do half. I usually do <laughs> half that. <laughs> I usually do like less, like an inch. But I'm like, hey, this is pretty good, and I'm having fun, and I'm not embarrassing myself. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pipe up and say something about shooting without your glasses if you wear glasses, because there are times when I'll put a regular pair of safety glasses on at the range and shoot paper targets because, you know, the. Y- you wear glasses, you probably know that there's a good chance that they can get knocked off your head and you're going to have to try to maybe shoot something with your glasses off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a good skill to have if you wear glasses at that you point have to- at, at those dis at, at mm, I hate to paint myself into a corner. I already feel like I have, <laughs> but at, at, uh, at those distances that typically we, we think of at self-defense distances, if you had to 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 shoot without your glasses, you could probably do just fine being target focused and not front sight focused. Uh, on that particular target, on right? That particular on a target. on that right. size of a target, right? Hey Zane, but, but in my case, I can see the front sight without my glasses. Right, you just can't see the target. <laughs> <laughs> the target's blurry anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> but my whole thing is this: not might not be the only situation you have doing that self defense scenario. Someone mm. might knock you down in the driveway, and you still got to get a shot to the house, or vice versa. So you want to know. You want to yes. put yourself at a controlled disadvantage just to see how things look. I totally understand it when you're thinking your way through stuff, thinking the worst case scenario, if you're already at the range. I'm not saying you dedicate a day of training right. to shooting without <laughs> your glasses, but but definitely just see what happens. And, and, and that's good. Same thing as weekend shooting, in my opinion. Yep. It should be something you work on just in case hey, you close your finger in the door and it's in one of those little cast things and you have to shoot with your other hand for a week or two. Why not know how to? Life comes at you, man, and and you have to work your way around it. And it's just that I'll tell you, that's part of the beauty of doing instruction. I'm sure you've seen that, Tony. It's a lot easier to demonstrate to a left-handed person just to do it left-handed. And in order to just do it (laughs) left-handed, you have to be able to. (laughs) So. I shoot better. I don't shoot better left-handed now because what I do is walk myself through fundamentals with both hands. I really do. But left-handed only or shooting left, just walk through the fundamentals. Same exact thing. The first time I shot dot torture, my support hand only group was better than my strong hand only group. Just because I was constantly thinking about it and focusing. Yep. You tend to focus more because you know you're going to be worse. Even though yep. you know the fundamentals, so you're you're actually better. Even though it takes you a little bit longer, even though the time may be negligible. So, well, Whoa. we better get moving and get into yeah, our- this. I'm, I'm yes. Florida man. I got my Florida neighbors. They're shooting off some uh, fireworks. Yeah, we can oh. hear it. Yeah, we can hear it. We just ignored it. Yeah, we just we'll just mute you if you're. I, I you thought know. he was having desk pops over there. <laughs> hey, whatever works for him. Maybe his neighbors no, are. I am not. <laughs> My neighbors are shooting out fireworks. So tomorrow night, it's really going to be loud. I'm probably not going to be able to get to bed till midnight. Yeah, I, I hear you there. Uh, so now we're into the product spotlight and discussion. First up is the new Mossberg MVP Precision. <laughs> and basically, it's Mossberg's take on the Ruger Precision Rifle. Uh, it comes in at MSRP of fourteen hundred and seven dollars, which is a couple hundreds less than the MSRP of their competitor called Ruger. Uh, <laughs> basically, you can get it in two versions: a six-five Creedmoor or a three-zero-eight. Uh, it comes with a ten-round magazine, 
Uh, it has a medium bowl threaded barrel. Uh, I think it's a 20 inch for the 308 and a 24 for the 65 Creedmoor. Twist rate is dependable on which one you get. It has an adjustable Luth AR stock on it. So you can adjust the length of pull from 12 and a half to 16 and a half inches. Uh, it has a anodized chassis with an M-Lock forearm. Uh, it weighs nine and a half or 10 pounds, depending on which version. It's 43 and a quarter inches long. Uh, let's see. What else are they saying about this? It runs. Oh, it has an included 20 MOA top rail, pick rail, uh, scalloped for the bolt handle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it has their LBA adjustable trigger. From, you can adjust it from three to seven pounds. It's got an oversized trigger guard, an oversized bolt knob. And I think I might have got everything except probably somebody will tell me something that I forgot. Uh, I'm, I was kind of excited when I saw this because I was, I was surprised that somebody didn't really make one to compare. Com Mossberg, of course, didn't make one to compete with Ruger. Well, now they have, and that's basically what it is. I'm guessing the street price would probably be 50 bucks cheaper than the Ruger, but I'm just guessing here. Uh, I I have not this rifle, but I do. I have had a few Moss, uh, not Mossbergs, but rifles similar to this in other brands savages that they make one uh i have heard good things about the mvp so i'm hoping that it is as good as we hope <laughs> i've never shot a mossberg uh, rifle so i can't speak to that um all the rifles i've shot never shot a mossberg kind of weird i'm working i'm working hard on that i'm working hard on changing that with myself i think that oh. look i think it looks cool i think it's i think it's good more competition is going to Hopefully drive the price down and drive or the dri aftermarket or, up. Or drive quality mm -hmm. up. All or the of other. Mm -hmm. um, it looks good. But again, I haven't really handled any Mossberg rifles. I, I guess I'm going to have to get into the long range game. Like, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm still kind of well, fighting it. The thing but, is, is you can get into the medium range game, which I guess now medium range is out to what? 800 yards <laughs> well i have to laugh i have to yeah. laugh at these people when they're talking about their long range um <laughs> it's like what, what's long range because i'm listening to guys shooting ars telling me 500 yards is long range i'm like that's what we did without optics in the core so could you stop telling me i need a one to eight to shoot at 500 yards please um hey, i i need i need an eight power scope to shoot 500 yards because i'm blind <laughs> uh, I look at this and I go Ruger provided a real game changer that's what a game changer is that every other company starts doing what you did after you mm -hmm. crushed them Yep. now Ruger came out with the Ruger American and I'm not even talking about precision I'm talking about Ruger American bolt actions and wrecked all of these companies wrecked them everybody that made a bolt action hunting rifle got their lunch served by ruger mm -hmm. then ruger took it another step and made their precision and just jacked them on their precision guns too by using the same bolt and everything else oh and yeah now, no uh, when the ruger precision came out that was me, me mm -hmm. not even being a long range guy have no real like interest in it but even when that gun came out i was like this is something yes awesome. and, and and everybody yeah everybody, everybody wants to because before you had to drop four or five thousand dollars on a on right a good, now you know on a exactly. decent long-range gun now you can right get a long-range game for two thousand dollars scoping right now, or fire, glass and everything yep the firearms blog has a series about precision rifles out so i was checking it out right before we came on air uh, and he was talking about his custom built precision rifle, and dude, just the body of the four hundred dollars, the barrel two hundred, the, the 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 bipod was two fifty. I'm like, no, for fourteen hundred dollars, here's your rifle. 
Yep. Go spend another fourteen hundred on glass, and you're in the game until yeah. you discover. Well, my thing is this. Okay, let's do seven hundred. Well, you can glass. do a grand on glass and have a good gun. But oh yeah, but really what I'm good. saying. What I'm saying is this gets you into the game and probably doing well enough to discover what you need to spend your money on and what you don't need to spend your money on. Instead mm-hmm. of before, you'd have to drop four grand without the glass just oh, to yeah. get into the game. And now you got some money so, for ammo, you know, to learn how here, to shoot. Yep. And here's <laughs> what gets me. A lot of people in the precision rifle game get all snobby, not understanding. You just opened it up to a lot more people. That means a lot more prize money. That means a lot more interest. That means a lot more commercial availability. I mean, it's good for everyone. It's good for everyone involved. So I think it's great that Mossberg has this version. Savage has their version. Bruger made all that happen. And you're opening up a sport for a lot of people. And I think that's awesome. And you're given also the ability to have classes now. You couldn't yeah. fill up precision rifle classes before because just the entry level was so expensive. Now mm-hmm. look at what you got. Yeah, wow. you made it. Again. You made the cost of entry into these things affordable, so to speak. But yeah, and uh-huh. that's kind of why I'm thinking about jumping in this because it is so much more affordable now. My only the main reason I never got involved with it before was because you know, you guys know me, but for anyone who, for the listeners who maybe have just turned tuning in, I'm a very practically oriented person, and I just don't see myself in a real life scenario ever taking a shot past what are we calling it, Conus? Maybe 200 in like end of the world zombies are attacking. So I just never had much of an interest in it. But at the prices that we're starting to see now, it might be worth it just for the hobby. And, and the other thing is this. Oh, sorry. But I've thought about this because a lot of people go, well, you know, what what situation do you find yourself being able to make a over 200 yard shot, blah, blah. And I'm like, in this one, if bad things happen, grid go, whatever failure you can come up with, that products are down and you have to scrounge and forge your own food. Game, all game, are going to be hunted and pressed hard. So you might, yep. So yeah, taking a 600 yard shot on an animal that you see and being able to hit it becomes very important because they're skittish now and most people can't shoot 600 yards to save their lives. So probably animals won't let you within, let you within a hundred to 200 yards. But if you're good at putting shots on at 600, you might be able to feed your family. Now I'm just coming up with one situation that you think of being able to use marksmanship to that point. But that's just one yeah. I pulled up. Well, and and the other thing is, is you know, learning to shoot precision rifles will only help you with other rifles and even yep. pistols. Uh, plus, if you understand ballistics better by shooting long range, I mean, what more? It's going to help you all the way across the board. I mean, because if you're shooting a AR with two twenty three, I mean, you're still going to understand that. You're going to understand better how to read the wind, how to read your drop, you know, yeah. all that stuff. If you so, can shoot a thousand yards, you, you can shoot at a hundred yards. And usually a lot better. And <laughs> you know, it's like uh, here, you know, high power matches are, they go out to like 600 yards with, you know, service rifles. But a lot of the courses, that you shoot at a lot of the ranges are just reduced target size to vary the the range. And well, you don't even get the though wind a, with that, you yeah, don't get that's the, a yeah. great idea. It still doesn't. It's still not as practical as if you can actually shoot the six hundred yard. Yeah, but you know, now, Rob, so Rob, you have a Ruger Precision, don't you? I do, and I've been quiet because you guys have been talking. I figured when y'all get done, I'll chime in my two cents and then shut up. <laughs> and he well, loves it. Well, that's that's kind of where I was going. What what's yeah. your thoughts on this on this thing? Um, I I have played and I've seen the Mossberg MVP in gun stores, not this one, but the regular the for the MVP a couple years ago in a gun store. I wasn't that impressed with it. Again, I've never shot a Mossberg MVP. I've never shot a Mossberg rifle in general, so I mean, I have no experience behind the trigger. Um, I see this and again, I look at this and go, okay, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. They're trying to imitate Ruger precision. 
And that's what a lot of people are doing. As they're saying, we've seen the new standard, so we're going to imitate it. Now, 1400 bucks. Now, again, Ruger, there's, I'm looking at their website. Their MSRP is 1600 bucks. I think you can pick one up brand new for 1400 And you can probably see a Ruger Precision coming on the used markets probably for, you know, 11 to 1200 bucks. And like Tony said about a scope, I've got a Vortex Viper first focal plane PST on mine. And that, those go for MSRPs like 1200 bucks or something. I think I picked mine up on sale for like under a grand. I put, now here's the key when you get a scope like that, put a decent set of matched rings on there. You know, about 100 bucks to 150 bucks for a decent set of matched rings with a minimum of four screws on each ring. And you'll have a really, really good scope. Mount it really, mount it good. Torque it down properly because you don't want to just crank it down. You, this is where you want to buy a nice torque wrench or a, 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 one of those quick torque torque screwdrivers like I've got. Um, they sell them for like 80 bucks. And this is where it's good to invest some, some money in your stuff because you can bend the, the housing if you're not careful when you torque it down. Um, and, you know, like that, that's, that is the gun that I use to do the three, uh, the three, three inch screw, three shot, three inch screw at 600 yards, 500 yards. And then again, I was also using match grade ammo. We were in a class and it was, you know, yes, it was a kind of controlled environment, but you know, it was, it was a good shot. And I could this do it probably. I don't have any, again, I have no experience with it, but, um, you know, it, it looks like a decent gun. I'm not going to poo-poo on it because, again, I have don't have any time behind the trigger. So, right. And it's Mossberg, if you want to send me one to review, I'd love to review one. <laughs> but but you I, hear this, right? You hear how much equipment and everything else mm -hmm. Rob bought just to get this Ruger Precision gun shooting correctly, the glass, the rings, the tools for it. This is all good for the industry. So yep. you will hear a bunch of these people poo-pooing this. And I'm like, what are you poo-pooing? More yeah. money in the industry? More shooters? Well, and I'm glad you said what you did about the rings. Because I think, I think scope rings are like the equivalent to a belt for handguns. It's like the most yeah. often overlooked. But it can really screw up your day if you don't have a good one. That's one of the and, best analogies I've, I think I've heard. Is and, yeah, I mean, I want to get ones that are matched together because if they're not matched in line, they'll be cocked off. And a few millimeters at the rings can go several inches at 100 to 200 to 500 to 1,000 yards. Well, if you buy cheap rings, you're bending your scope body yep. and, and all that stuff. And, and they make like a lapping kit for them, but mm -hmm. you just buy a good set to begin with. You yeah, know? that's, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. And then, you know, I also bought the, the Weaver, the scope leveling system. Right. So and that's important too, because your scope yes. isn't level. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I, almost, and, receiver. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I bought, but when you buy the, that screwdriver I was talking about, and the Weaver set, you can use that to mount a scope on any gun. It's not just for the precision rifle. It's for your hunting gun, your AR-15. Yeah, I, I, Every scope I've got, I use that to mount the scope to my gun. Every every time I change scopes, man, I take some. I change my scopes all the time. Yeah, I'll yeah. buy a scope and go, oh, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> New scope. I've got a right. stack. Of, i got scopes on top of my gun safe that are, you know, well, you know, this is what the gun store guy said to buy. And, oh, yeah, that's a great deal on a scope. But... Yeah, it sucks. So I guess I'm gonna either put it, probably put it on a 22, or give it to somebody to say, "Here, take this." You know, so you know the low low end Nikon, low end, you know, what I consider low end, you know, under 100 bucks is what they're worth about right now. So it's like, you know, give it to the kids or give it to the the nephews or the nieces or whatnot and say, "Here, you know, put on a 1022 and say, learn how to shoot with a scope." Yeah, but, and I almost when I was putting stuff in the show notes, uh, worn they make scope mounts and rings and stuff. They came out with a new retractable scope level for when you're shooting. So you can keep the rifles straight and it just kind of slides in and out and goes on your, on your scope ring, I think. And you know, it's pretty cool and it's cheap, but it keeps you lined up while you're shooting. I did just the opposite. I bought one of those actual ones. You, you take it apart, you clamp it to your scope ring. So you level that, the bubble on the this level that attaches to your scope with your rifle when it's level. And that way, yeah, you can look up and you go, okay, am I level? Boom. And do a real quick. Yes. Yes. Yeah. level Because believe it or not, if, you, if your crosshairs are off, you're not probably going to notice it when you're looking through the scope. 
But if you're not perfectly level or, or vertical, you can definitely be off on the target. Oh, yeah. By because if you're, if you're cocked over, the bullet's going to go down. The bullet just knows gravity. Yeah. You know what I mean? The bullet's going to go down. Guy, to an angle. I saw mm-hmm. a guy on Facebook the other day was trying to level his scope, and he was only using one level. I was like, well, there's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the nice thing about the Weaver kit I got is you, there's a, there's two levels that comes with one level. You just put on top of the on top of the receiver, and you get the receiver leveled, and then you put another yeah. one at the barrel. You level that to the to the receiver. Then now you know you've got your barrel and your receiver level. You put the scope on there and you use that first level to level your scope. Yeah. And as long as the the the, the barrel scope the barrel level is level, you're good to go. Yeah. Exactly. But, Okay, yeah. now that now that we have gone off, confused on how everybody. To, how to yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, but I still got the Ruger precision though. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is that they were pretty much the first first affordable style long range rifle like that, and yeah, everybody's copying them. The Mossberg and MVP, the, but that's really great for business. Though, is I'm looking at the bolt. My Ruger Precision is kind of tight to tolerance between the, the bolt and my scope. And I really have to be, you know, grab it from the underside when I go to uh, rack it or you know, yeah. charge it. I'm not sure if this one would be doing the same thing where if you grab, if you get a good grip on it, you bring it up and you go to bring it back and you bust your knuckle on the, the, uh, the scope adjustment turrets. Yeah, it, uh, those are kind of one of those things you kind of have to actually see one before you can tell. Mm. I mean, you can tell without a scope I ha- where it's fits but i i get you on that well now we'll go into something that's more completely on a different note uh nikon it's, not, it's, it's totally not for that rifle oh totally I'm not sure it is <laughs> can be totally yeah well yeah it could be but that... gotta have backup mm-hmm. <laughs> backup red dot okay nikon's come out with some new optics uh for their tactical line i guess this so this is the p tactical super dot uh mm-hmm. it has an msrp of 199.95 uh and basically this is their new red dot except is there anything it's got a 2 moa dot in it uh so there is that it has 10 illumination brightness levels it runs my favorite battery the 2032 <laughs> because somebody's got to do something with it uh and i figured you know it's got the standard fully coated multi-coated optics uh they say it's got a durable construction who knows it includes spacers for a third co-witness or full co-witness or standard mount on a picatinny rail uh it is waterproof and shockproof to a certain certain thing it comes with a five-year warranty you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's weighs four point two ounces. It's only two point eight inches long. Uh, all that normal stuff. It looks like it's got on a plus or minus for the brightness. It's not on a knob. Uh, it does have the windage and the elevation adjustments that you can turn the cap over and adjust them. The only thing that I noticed with this is one of my pet peeves about red dots are that a lot of times you can see where the led is mounted when you're looking through it, you can see like a flat. So it's not like there's like a round and then they put a flat where the diode sits and goes up. And it looks like in one of these pictures, that is exactly how this is. I, I haven't looked through one yet, so I do not know if that's possible, if that's true or not. But I know there are ones out there that don't have that problem in my eyes. Other than that, it looks like a decent red dot optic. Next. It looks like another red dot optic. Um, my whole thing is, what's the battery life? Yeah, it like, doesn't do even leave, say. How do you leave that out? How do you only have one picture of through it? through the red dot and it's not even a live picture i'm thinking it's it's a computer generated photo it is if you it look is. at the bottom it says it is in like yeah, a very I'm spine like, print I'm, I'm like this is really 
just sadly done from a company like Nikon. And it seems like I'm the guy that just bashes everybody's website. But come on, you're an international company and you have four freaking pictures up. You don't give battery life and you say it's $199. Well, let me tell you what's in that $199 price range. Hollison, Bushnell, Vortex, Premium, oh, yeah. from, uh, was it? Primary Arms. There are a lot of people there that take a lot better pictures and show a lot more than you show with your new premium brand. Now, they just had yeah. this lunch in, in January, a shot show of this entire line of optics, and they give you garbage. Like, they have a whole lot of flash, a whole lot of sizzle, no steak. I'm serious. I watched <laughs> their little promo video, and I'm like, like, great music. Great freaking like old school MTV dun, 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 and camera work. And I'm like, well, could you show it? Could yeah. you do some range time? Could you actually say something so I can have a feeling of what I'm getting here? Springfield what Armory problem? Saint uh, kind of style. No, style. no, that, not, that, <laughs> not that much bullcrap. <laughs> but um, my whole thing is let me know what I'm getting because Nikon has different levels of quality with their scopes. Where am I really at with this? I'm not even saying Nikon is garbage. I'm saying they have different price levels. Am I getting a good deal with this 199? And how come you're not showing me stuff? And I I, I get you. And I, that's kind of one of those things. It's like, you know, yeah, what are they showing us? They aren't really showing us anything. So I'm. it's like, well, is it really actually out yet? Uh, I mean, I haven't seen any reviews. Anything yes. like that, it's kind of, and like you said, the one picture through it is not a picture. It's a, it's a graphical drawing. So, you know, battery life's pretty important, and there's a lot in the market that people have already proven that know are good quality for that price range. Mm -hmm. Do you have an yeah. automatic shutoff? Like, <clears throat> that's kind of cool to know if you have an right. automatic shutoff. Do you have scope covers of any kind? Because you're not showing any. So, not yeah. that, that that's a thing, but all of mine are covered up right now. Well, um, and, and like you say, with the automatic shutoff, that's just something that's nice to know because y you might require that or you might require n not that for whatever your needs are. Like for a home defense gun, I don't want an automatic shutoff. Right. No, you want you know, to, unless it has I, an I automatic to, turn on. Right, I want to turn on, yeah, leave it on. It has, if it's a range yeah. gun, well, yeah. If I I don't want to throw it in the safe and then battery's dead next time I go to bring it out. So, you know, and so I have the um the Vortex Crossfire, which is very similar to this. So I was looking at the specs, comparing them. Very very similar specs, very similar price range. They give you the battery life on Vortex website. Yes, they do. Um. And so far, it's held up very well for me. Tony, you have a Holosun, right? That's held up pretty well for you so far. It's in this yep. price range. So I, I, like, like Tony said, I'm not going to say it's junk, but I'm not going to rush out to spend my money on it okay. when I don't really know what it is. I'll right. make an observation. I have three Nikon scopes. They're all sitting on top of my safe right now. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> we got Rob's input, and actually, I think it's a decent input. I yeah. don't. I've 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 tried their um, three of their scopes, and their their top end scope. No thanks. I've, I don't. I, I don't. I just walk by the Nikon booth whenever I see him at the <laughs> NRA or shows or whatnot. I have one Nikon, and it's on the twenty two. So that tells yeah, you. Yeah, it's kind of hard to mess up the twenty two scope. <laughs> Holy that God. that vortex I got's been riding in a truck down dirt roads for about four months now, and it's still holding zero. So, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, was and smart? no, I have the crossfire, the one they released at Shot Show this year. Okay, uh, I like I like Tony has. I have a Hollow Sun also, and that thing, you know, I've had zero I, problems. Zero. I've anything. been hearing good things about them. I I um, I, I pretty much. That optic is fantastic. I mean, it's beaten around. It's driven, you know, thousand miles just in the back of a pickup with no 
beaten around. I mean, it still looks new, but driving it around on roads and stuff and, you know, it holds zero and never had any problems with it. So it's. Well, and like we said many a times on the show, the best way to test your gears, go run it through a class. You know, that's, that's a good way to break stuff. Or even run it through competition. Yeah. I think it was um, the practical practical show. They got one on a rifle over at Practac. And like it's been run through shoot house classes and stuff, and they still haven't broke it. So, yeah, Rob, and Rob Pinkus has been running. Rob Pinkus has been running them for since the beginning of the PDN tour this year, on the rifles, and he hasn't had a problem. I have two. I have one on the SKS. I have one on the uh, Rob's rifle. I've been taking Rob's rifle to diversity shoots. A bunch of people have been handling it. I put the things, you know, put it in a rifle bag, and I check in the back of the car, you know throw it on the table, throw it under the table, put it in the corner, throw it and lock it up at the house. We went to Pennsylvania to shoot Sunday. Well, things that just happened to your rifle. I mean, I haven't dropped my rifle in years. I mean, you know, uh, Marine Corps kind of gets you out of that. But it was hard last week and it was hard dumping that rifle in the barrel. Because that just yeah. didn't seem natural to me. Not not something you're supposed to do. Um, yeah. But when we were shooting at the range on uh, Sunday, uh, Angelo looked at me and went, hey. And I said, what? And he wiggled the hollow sun on top. Said it came loose a little bit. Yeah, I'd been shooting at 100 yards with that the week before. Getting like, what, two two-inch groups with a red dot at 100. And again, I can't see. <laughs> so I just eh, eh, cranked it down. Done. Never lost and, anything. Yeah. You know, all we can hope is that this Nikon is as good as the hollow suns that we run. <laughs> Well, and that's what I was going to say, just like with the last rifle we talked about, like none of us are going to run out to go buy this, but it's another player in the game. Maybe it'll cause drive price down and quality up, just like we talked about with the rifle. So, right. And I mean, more power to him. Keep bringing stuff to market, folks. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's great. And because we'll move into our listener feedback section now, because for some reason we have a ton of feedback. For us, I, I don't know oh, what they happened. Made, made up, Chad. I mean, besides me whining about it, I guess that worked. Uh, first <laughs> one came up, it came in through the email. It's kind of, it's from Jason S. Says, Hello, I was listening to the podcast when a guy sent in feedback against Tony and his local group organization diversity shoot. I believe what Tony does is awesome. Bringing more people into the gun community is the smartest idea. If any of these things Tony is doing for his community should extend to other communities, the more that people understand about guns and how they can be safe and the better, maybe the show could sway some of those millionaires that like guns to help fight against the Bloombergers of the world. The best thing we can do as gun owners is to support our groups locally. And those in other States, like Tony suggested, on his second is for everyone podcast, just because we don't live in the state does not, we can't send a letter to the representative of other States to get out our opinions. Well, thoughts out opinions. Okay. As for the show, I really enjoy the realistic viewpoints of everyone on the show, getting your thoughts and experience, make finding good gear helpful. Thanks for doing the podcast. I listen every episode. And he also, which I didn't put in here, it's from Oregon. So see, I guess now I know of two people that actually listen to us in Oregon. So I <laughs> hey, guess we're thanks, getting there. Yeah, I, th- I especially after that other one, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, I, <laughs> Tony will like this. Uh, where'd you Where'd you learn to read? You were oh, Rob. I I live in Oregon. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, well, come you, on. You read the same language, don't you? You speak the same language, right? Yeah. I, so I don't know why I can't read it. He must be educated. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we have a couple iTunes reviews also. It says, Are you happy now, Chad? Five stars by Carnivorous Horse. Chad always whines about not getting any listener feedback. So here you go. Happy now. In seriousness, great show. Really enjoy the variety of topics. It's also nice that you keep it PG and I can listen to it around my kids. Unlike other FRN shows, cough, WLS, cough. LOL. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought that was pretty funny, but thank you. Uh, and the next one, but you are I'm, best. I'm thinking Sean from Black Bag Resources is the carnivorous horse, but I could be wrong. Oh uh, yeah, you'd be very wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, very good, five stars by Rusty NSTL. Whatever. I don't read, so great. Yeah, great group of guys with entertaining content. I highly recommend to anyone who enjoys firearms and to a great job, fellas. Keep them coming. Hey Zane, that, go Yo, ahead. You think his uh, Chad's kids are insomniacs because he read bedtime stories to them? <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Most Damn. boring bedtime stories ever. <laughs> Kids like just make him stop. I swear I'll go to bed. I'll just go stop. to sleep. Just, hey, I'll just stop. If you if you if you go to bed, and unusual punishment. See, see, now you guys are catching on. See, I got him to go to sleep, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> the little engine that could oh it, uh, the little engine. I think that I could, can. I think <laughs> I can. I think you know. Guess I what, can. guys. <laughs> Guess who don't? Guess who volunteered to read? Tony, it must take him about an hour to read one fish, two fish. <laughs> one of the fish guys. What color is that red fish? <laughs> Friends like that, right? Thanks for the feedback, guys. It really it helps us in iTunes and stuff, and it helps us get seen and bump up the list. So yeah, yeah. and I really appreciate, and I really appreciate you guys who uh, believe the ver- diversity shoot is worth having. Speaking of diversity shoot, we can go right into this on August 2nd. The next diversity shoot is coming up. Uh, um, we know it. A lot of us here already know what I do, but it's a Second Amendment workshop that welcomes all people. All people, regardless of your background, regardless of your politics, regardless of your sexuality, regardless of your race. The reason I say it like that is because a lot of us take for granted as gun people when I say everyone's welcome. Everyone should understand. I mean, everyone. But there's a lot of preconceived notions about what gun owners are. The media is running around saying every gun owner is a member of the NRA, which that is not true, not true at all. Most gun owners aren't members of the NRA. Most gun owners are regular human beings like everyone else. And we want to hang out with you if you want to hang out with us. But you don't know how to approach a stranger with that. So that's what we do here at the diversity shoot. I put word out to every one of you guys, whoever you want to bring to a diversity shoot, bring them. We will welcome them. We will not attack them. And that's why I host this, because that's the only way we're going to break up these stereotypes perpetrated by the media and these lies put out by the media. So we step up. We do this. We have fun. From regular companies, we get swag. Uh, Riding Shotgun with Charlie is a podcast that you can check out. And I also think he's on YouTube. But Charlie Cook has donated 20 knives those little wallet knives that you fold up and you can use, but they're labeled riding shotgun with Charlie. He donated 20 of those to diversity shoot and left him a gun for hire for me. Those are going to be given in a swag bag to the first 10 people through the door. Rhiannon Tang, who was a volunteer at our diversity shoot, rolled down to Dallas for NRA, told everybody she ran into what she was getting swag for. She brought back so much swag from Dallas. We'll probably be giving this away for the rest of the year. So what we want to do is just introduce people to firearms in a safe, non-intimidating way and let them ask questions. And as gun owners, we have to deal with questions all the time. How do we justify this? What do we think about this? Why do we? Well, my diversity shoot is where that can be answered. You can bring that annoying work friend to the August 2nd diversity shoot that asks all those why questions. You can eat some pizza drink some soda, win some prizes, and then go shoot and leave your annoying liberal friend with me and we can have a conversation. And at the end of the night, more than likely, your liberal friend will be running around showing people his target. Like, hey, look what I did. I can't wait to come back next time and I'm bringing my wife. That's the purpose of the diversity shoot is to change minds one at a time because we have billionaires going against us. We have the press going against us. We have the entertainment business going against us. So we as gun owners, are going to have to grow the community one human being at a time, one interaction at a time. And what I do with the diversity shoot is just part of that. So if you want to help us out, please donate to our GoFundMe. You can also donate to our Patreon by joining. We have really cool knives coming up that are serialized 
and limited editions and only members of Patreon is going to be available for that drawing. And you can join our Patreon group for as little as a dollar. The more it'll be appreciated because what we do with that is it gives me some breathing room. It allows me to know I'll have money for ammo or food or things like that coming up on the next diversity shoot. Um, follow us on Instagram, Simon Says Train. Follow us on Facebook on The Second is for Everyone. Or you can even join Simon Says Train. If you live in Jersey and you want to compete in one of our Minuteman challenges, do that too. You can check out the Minuteman Challenge page. Really appreciate it, guys. And as always, thank you for allowing me to go on every week. I Hopefully, this only took like two or three minutes. I have no idea when I get going. So I do apologize if I bored some of you. But this is what I do. And I'm passionate about it. Thanks again. No, we like it. And we like supporting it. So I think I think you're going to be able to spew your your wonderful you know diversity shoot for years <sighs> i hope so man um dude it's becoming rough uh we like shooting it was actually talking about us last week and they read off the increases they're talking about increasing fees in new jersey for anything firearms related by up to two thousand percent yeah, I heard those, and I, well, I think you said it on your podcast, oh. but I was like, I was like, man, those blank, blank, blanks. So <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. Well, since my daughter keeps harassing me on the chat, I guess we'll go into the wrap up so that we can like sick Tony on it or something, <laughs> and I'll beg for feedback, send questions, comments, feedback to Gun Gear Review at Gmail dot com. Remember to subscribe on iTunes and leave us an iTunes review. Check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. <laughs> be, <laughs> be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage. Check us out on Facebook at forward slash Firearms Insider. Follow us at Firearms Insider on Instagram. Thanks for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And if you happen to be watching live, have a safe and happy Independence Day. And we are out. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>